Hey everyone, I wanted to make this video real quick because I wanted to talk about a rare and serious complication of having a CACNA1A disorder. Um, and share with you some um, details about it and about having the CACNA1A disorder and how that comes about um, being associated with having the disorder. Um, tell you a little bit about the disorders associated with the gene CACNA1A. Um, to start with, I'm genetically confirmed to have a mutation within the gene CACNA1A. Um, and it's likely consistent with the diagnosis of episodic ataxia type 2. Um, but it can be associated um, with other disorders um, like spinocerebellar ataxia type 6, hemiplegic migraine type 1, um, autism spectrum disorders, intellectual disability, eye disorders, um, cognitive impairment, um, cerebellar atrophy, and causes a lot of neurological, different neurological symptoms. Um, but the thing is with having a CACNA1A diagnosis, which is a gene that's responsible for these different disorders, um, is that there is a significant variability between um, having the disorder within this gene um, and an overlap in the symptoms um, with these different disorders. So many people that have a CACNA1A disorder can present as having um, more than one or multiple um, different disorders associated with it. Um, or, you know, um, a disorder, a specific disorder that can have symptoms that appear like this other disorder um, associated with CACNA1A um, gene. For example, um, the overlap um, with episodic ataxia type 2 associated with the GNCACNA1A um, can appear a lot like hemiplegic migraine type 1, which is also another disorder within that gene. CAC and A1A. And um, the person with the episodic ataxia type 2 um, can have the same symptoms of as, as hemiplegic migraine type 1, such as migraine headaches and paralysis affecting one side of the body. Um, and some people with episodic ataxia type 2 diagnosis. Um, can um, show symptoms of this that seem a lot like hemiplegic migraine type 1. So that's just an example on how that works. In addition, a person with episodic ataxia type 2 can but not always present themselves with having additional disorders such as intellectual disability, um, or autism spectrum disorders as well. 
So, um, you may look up or Google different disorders associated with this gene, CACNA1A, and a lot of it um, looks like it's not a serious condition, um, but in truth, it can very much indeed be a serious condition or lead to serious consequences. Um, people with um, CACNA1A disorders can have life-threatening seizures, have long hospitalization stays, um, have um, medical emergencies due to their CACNA1A disorders, or um, severe hemiplegic migraine episodes that can lead to coma um, due to their CACNA1A disorders, or in severe but rare cases, it can lead to death or sudden death. Um, Now, this rare and serious complication that can happen in individuals with CACNA1A disorders, um, it is associated with um, trivial head trauma. So, um, Individuals can, let's say, be walking and suddenly they fall, they bump their head off of something. Um, this could lead to a condition that's a medical emergency called delayed cerebral edema, which is like a brain swelling or what have you. Um, and eventually it can lead to coma or in severe cases, death. Um, but that's a rare and serious uh, consequence or effect of having a CACNA1A disorder. Now, um, a lot of these um, Serious things that come with having a CACNA1A disorder. Um, they're, they could be sudden or provoked or um, they are different in a way which um, it's like an accident. Um, happens more so than it is like a complication of having a disease. Um, like, let's say someone with a different disease not related to CAC and A1A. It comes along with heart complications or um, something like that. This is different where an individual would um, maybe prone to accidents or like have a fall that may trigger something life-threatening um, or very serious. Um, this is more of a CACNA1A um, thing. So it seems, um, and some individuals have life-threatening seizures, seizures with having this condition. Now, it doesn't matter what the CACNA1A disorder you have, because like I said, the features tend to overlap um, in symptoms. 
So an individual with episodic attacks of type 2 associated with it um, can also have seizures as well, um, among other symptoms or um, additional disorders associated with the gene CACNA1A. So that's what I wanted to talk about. Um, I hope this brought you a little bit of insight and I will see you soon. Bye now.